Hello and welcome to another Dragon's Dogma 2 video. My name is Brian if you happen to be new around here, but if you're returning, thank you so much for checking out this video. There is a lot that I want to cover for you, so please feel free to use the chapter markers to jump to whatever section interest you the most but also if this video still has you asking questions after you watch it sound off in the comments and i'll do my best to get you answers below or in follow-up videos if needed let's start with the most basic question the most important question that i actually get all the time is should you play dragon's dogma 1 before stepping into dragon's dogma 2 this march and while i won't stop you it should be noted that while the setting mirrors that of Dragon's Dogma 1, Dragon's Dogma 2 is set in a parallel world with new locations and characters and so much more. This means that you don't have to play the original to understand what is going on with the plot of Dragon's Dogma 2, especially if you're a newcomer to the series. All right, for the newcomers out there, what kind of game is this? What can you expect out of Dragon's Dogma 2? Well, I think it's important to start with this as a fantasy action RPG. You do have the ability to create your character. In fact, you can go download the character creator right now and start playing around with the three different races, the humans, the elves, the beastrin, and really try to customize your player character to any degree possible. The character creator is absolutely really impressive and I highly encourage you check it out today, especially for the sweet, sweet music that accompanies it. But you can also pick up several different what they call vocations. Vocations is your class, or if you're from Final Fantasy, it's your job. Uh, this is what defines your play style. And the new, the nice thing is, is that there are advanced uh, vocations, even hybrid advanced vocations that you can unlock as you play. Now, I'll talk more about the vocations here later in this video, and I have a dedicated video for the vocations coming later this week that I hope that you check out as well. So if you guys enjoy this content, like and sub so that way you never miss a video upload from me. But the choice is up to you. Thank you so much if you do. And if you don't, thanks just for being here. You're awesome. And I, I only wish you the best, but let's continue on. Here's where I think things are interesting, right? Because you can create your character. You can pick your class. You also have what's called the pawn system. This is where you have, en uh, you know, uh, not enemy NPCs. You have friendly NPCs who are going to be joined uh, to your party. And so ultimately, you know, you want to kind of come up with that typical balance. But to start off, when you're creating, you got a couple of classes you can pick from. You got the fighter, the thief, the mage, and the archer. Uh, these are the four base classes, and these are all usable by pawns. Some of the advanced, uh, you know, vocations will not allow you to uh, use those on pawns, but some of them do, and we'll cover that in more detail in future videos. So hopefully, and sorry for that kind of tease, just know that information is coming. But one of the things is really interesting is that outside of the pawn system and your travel companion, you know, your travel companions, these can actually be shared out online. While this game is not a multiplayer RPG, it is a single player RPG. You can download, you can get pawns from other players. And this is where the UI truly shines because much like Ghost of Shishima, you're not seeing markers and waypoints and quest markers over NPCs heads. It removes that efficiency and allows you to get immersed in into the world and personally speaking i really like this i like this aspect because also your pawns will help guide you and point out various different things in a way there's a big boulders gate 3 vibe that i get from this right out the gate but bringing that up i know that could open up a whole bag of chips in the comments for people saying how dare you compare this to boulders gate 3 or yes this is that evolution we'll have to have that discussion in future videos but time will tell what the reception is on that aspect but beyond on the trading aspect of your uh, your pawns, what's really cool here is that you can also use NPCs that are in villages and towns, and you can level up their bravery. Like if you bring a monster into town, the NPCs will help you fight that monster. But the risk is the NPCs can die permanently. You will have a limited time to be able to revive them, though. But if you sleep on that, if you do not handle that right away. 
uh, it could end up leading to disaster in this case. So just note, there are lots of options and I love that the NPCs respond to what is going on. They, some of them might even run away. So just note that who knows what's gonna happen. And if you keep doing this repeatedly and all your bravest fighters in the town die and you don't revive them, you could be setting yourself up for wanting to use that as a tactic and then not having that option because everybody in town's just gonna be like, this guy's crazy. We have to run away, which I think is a logical conclusion if you see a giant you know, griffin or an orc out there. But, uh, you know, it is an RPG. And so <laughs> I'm much more braver in an RPG than I would be if I saw one of these creatures in the real world. Now, let's talk about fast travel. We talked about the UI, how it's simplified, how like in a way Ghost of Tsushima really kind of like streamlines the aspect and you're using your pawns to kind of work with it. One of the things I didn't mention is that if a pawn of a friend that you've downloaded has actually completed the quest, they know where to go in your game so they could actually lead you directly to it. But fast traveling does exist, but it's incredibly limited. You have these fairy gates, uh, this little fairy crystal that you use that will allow you to fast travel to another location, but these are expensively rare. So just note, you're gonna want to save these from time to time because you could find yourself pretty far away from like a town where maybe you got some quests that still need to be turned in or completed etc so just kind of keep that in mind you can obviously hoof it on foot but they also have a cart system that will take you from point a to point b uh and that in and of itself is you know a little bit more uh viable for you as a player but obviously hoofing it on foot comes with its own risks versus rewards namely that as you fight and you will find that yourself need to rest but putting out a campfire uh, isn't a safe sanctuary because that fire could attract monsters and they could come and try to eat you uh, just note that is going to be how it is but let's continue on what are the vocations the aka the classes in dragon's dogma 2 well at this time of recording they have 10 so let's get into it dragon's dogma 2 players will have four to choose from when to start and instead of just three now this is from three in the original dragon's dogma in this case we have the archer the fighter the mage and the thief the Strider vocation, basically from the previous game, seems to have been split up between the Archer and the Thief in this case. With the former adapting mainly the long-range playstyle, while the latter is focusing on quick melee hits. The Archer specializes in long-range attacks with the bow and the arrow, and the Fighter emphasizes fighting in melee combat, effective as an offensive unit with the sword, and also being able to protect the party with their shield. The mage focuses on using magic and to deal long range magic damage, as well as support other members of the party with buffs and healing. Finally, the thief will focus in on being nimble and all around the battlefield, overwhelming abilities with positional advantages along with quick speedy attacks with their daggers. Now, additionally, this has been confirmed to be a new vocation and it will be joining the selection called the Mystic Spearhand. Now, this vocation is more on the advanced hybrid side, and it's going to highlight both magic and physical melees with the Duo Spear. The Magic Archer is also set to return from the previous game, and this is a vocation that highlights dealing damage from distance with magic arrows. These two vocations were called advanced in the Tokyo Game Show, but it is still yet whether they're going to be classified as a hybrid vocation or as an advanced location, but just note that as you play, you will have an a, uh, NPC that will allow you to unlock quests and unlock these additional vocations to change into. Now, Brian, I know you've talked about pawns, but what really are they in Dragon's Dogma 2? Well, pawns are an extra NPC character that can assist you and join players in combat. These companions can join you throughout your adventure and are influenced by your different experiences as you progress through the game. Players will be able to customize and create their own pawn. And I would recommend in this case that if you, you know, maybe start with a fighter as something that's got a lot of survivability, team it up with the main mage pawn so you get that support and healing so as you adventure there you go that's a good way to start in addition to this players will be able to hire two more pawns to complete a party of four these additional pawns are created by other players which means the pawns that you create can also be hired by other players to join their party these experiences and the experiences that they gain from traveling with other adventures will improve their abilities to assist you in combat 
How do you gain new vocations? Like we talked about vocation masters, as you travel, you're gonna encounter these various different masters who will have mastered their chosen vocation to the fullest. By deepening your relationship with the master and gaining their approval, you can gain access to their vocation or they may grant you special tomes to teach you of the highest order, the master's teaching. So what is the story of Dragon's Dogma 2? While we already said that it takes place in a parallel world, much like Dragon's Dogma 1, uh, 1, you do not need to play the original to get the story. Ultimately here is there is a dragon that really likes to cause some havoc and you are an Arisen. That means that you have uh, been created to go and seek out and kill this dragon. And that essentially is perhaps the best MacGuffin or uh, plot thread that, that there really is. Bad dragon, you fight him and see who wins. What's the maximum party size in Dragon's Dogma 2, you ask? The maximum party size is four. The player's main, their pawn, and two other pawns can be hired to join you on the journey. Is there multiplayer? Well, unfortunately, no, there's no multiplayer in Dragon's Dogma 2. However, Dragon's Dogma 2 is created to feel like you are playing co-op with the game's pawn system. Is Dragon's Dogma 2 open world, you ask? Well, yes, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a large world environment for you to explore and two main regions filled with several NPCs and towns to encounter. This is also uh, a company with no loading screens or at least very minimal loading screens. Uh, in the game so you as a player will be able to experience things very immersively now so what are these ox carts brian that you talked about earlier can you give us a little bit more detail and yes so ox carts will allow you to hop on you can choose to close your eyes which will time skip and basically move you to the destination faster they can be dangerous though you can actually be attacked while on an ox cart so just keep that in mind uh, that's something to kind of be nimble and quick it's really going to be up to you but it's going to be a little bit safer way to travel as opposed to just hoofing it on foot all right brian i'm excited what version should i buy well there's two versions of this game the standard and the deluxe the standard obviously comes with the game if you pre-order you get the superiors weapon quartet the deluxe comes with the game and the pre-order superior war uh weapons quartet along with a ring of assurance which the internet currently is speculating what it does so we'll find out soon enough the explorers camping kit 115 or 1500 rift crystals music and sound collection as well as additional items and you can see them all listed on the store's page so you got a lot of choices there but if you're choosing to play on pc and like i said there's actually a rumor that this is coming to geforce now and it when i say rumor i would pretty much go out and say that it's confirmed to be coming to geforce now but they have not officially announced it at the time of this recording but we'll be sure to cover that in future videos if you guys need it. Now, Dragon's Dogma 2, minimum system requirements for Windows. You're going to need a 64-bit uh, processor operating system. That's Windows 10 and above. You need an Intel Core i5 or an AMD Ryzen uh, 5 3600. Uh, you need 16 gigs of RAM, an NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1070 or higher. You need network internet connection, and you also uh, want to kind of, from a performance perspective, they're anticipating 1080p at 30 frames a second with these settings. The recommended system settings here, all across the board, same 64-bit operating system, 10 and above, Intel Core i7 or AMD Ryzen 5 3600X or above, still the 16 gigs of RAM, uh, GTX RTX, 2080 or above uh direct x version 12 and obviously broadband internet connection now their per, uh, estimated performance is at 2160i with 30 frames a second and they say that it might drop the frames in intense situations so if you have anything higher than this i think you can get higher than that 30 frames a second because even in the demo even in the uh the character creator you can actually choose to set your frames at 120 frames per second and that's only unfortunately for the pc world the game is also coming out on xbox series x and s and playstation 5 and they're saying that they're working to really have that at a locked 30 frames per second on those consoles so uh one of the things that you uh have a lot of choice in choosing what you want to do in this case and i hope that you guys got something out of this video again if this video if you still have questions after this video sound off in the comments i'll be sure to try and get to them down there or uh in a follow-up video but guys thank you so much for your time today my name is brian and a huge shout out to the members who make all of this possible i really hope that you guys enjoyed the video as well guys if you want to become a member or you want to be gifted a membership coming out on uh, future live streams we have a very generous community and we got a lot of exclusive content that you might be able to unlock just just by hanging out so anyway guys thank you so much for your time hopefully i will see you in my next video but until then take care